Hello all and good evening. Welcome again to this uh, session. This session is a uh, very important topic. And the topic is our one of the most important skull foraminas, a very high topic from our uh, head neck, that the foraminas of the foraminas of the skull. Welcome all. My name is Dr. Angit Khandelwal, MBBS MS Anatomy, Anatomy Educator on Anacademy. Let's start the session. Few things before proceeding. This is uh, mark your calendars, 19th of Feb, Saturday. Nine in the morning. There is only a mock test which is going on. You can use the code NPG10 to unlock the test. So mark your calendars. Then we also have this toppers and all the list of the tests which are going to held on the month of February. All the sub subjects over here. So till 8th, 9th February, we'll be completing out the major tests, subject-wise tests. Then we, over here, we have the few of the batches come for the FMG, NEET, and the next PG exam, which are going to start in a day or two, or already have started. Let's come to the topic. The topic over here is a important skull foraminas important skull foraminas so high yield topic questions come in various formats from the skull foraminas let us see few of them then we'll also try to show you from the skull and also and from the images also today we'll try to show you in the skull also then few foraminas if we can recognize from there so remember there are a few foraminas in the skull which are worth noting which are these foraminas so there's a list of around many foraminas Let's start with the important ones. There is an important foramen known as foramen rotundum. I'll just name a few foramens over here. Then there is obviously foramen ovale and there is a foramen spinosum. These are three important foramena found in the sphenoid bone which are worth noting. We'll just see where do, do they lie and what actually passes. Now the point is why do they ask, keep on asking the foramena? The reason is in the skull we have a brain and in brain we have the various nerves which are coming out and going in. There are a lot of vessels which are going out, coming in, into the brain. And the only route with which these structures can go in and come out of the brain is through the foramen of the skull. That is the reason. And in any of the skull fracture, we have these ideas that uh, these foramen, they may be breaking down or they may be compressed by any tumor, any pathology, any infective or any tumor, any. So that can be compressed. So we should be knowing two things in the foramen of the skull that where do they lie? that you to identify the foramen, where does it lie, that is very important. Second thing is, what is the content of that foramen? So these are two things which we should be knowing in the topic of skull foraminas. Okay, so as already I have written, uh, written down few foramens, rotundum, ovale and spinosum. These are three foramens which we will see. So remember them, what is passing through them, we will see. Apart from this, if we go from the anterior cranial fossa to the middle to the posterior, I will show in the skull also. Then there are other phenomena which are worth noting, which are, I am writing few other phenomena, superior orbital fissure, contents passing through it, optic canal, right, lacerum also, we will have a look at the foramen lacerum, rotundum will spinosum already done, then we have the jugular foramen, in the posterior kin fossa as you are moving more posteriorly, then we have the carotid canal which is seen from the lower side. Apart from this, we also have foramen like the stylomastoid foramen, stylomastoid foramen, that is very important foramen. Then obviously the largest, that is the foramen magnum, and obviously the internal auditory matrix. Now, one thing is, sir, how to recognize and how to remember all these foramen. First of all, you should be knowing that how many cranial nerves are there. I mean, we all know that, that there are 12 pair of cranial nerves. So what is the use, use of cranial nerve? The use of cranial nerve is to come out of the brain or to go in and supply the structures in head, neck and other areas. So therefore each cranial nerve we should be knowing that from which foramen it goes. We will also see that. Now I am showing you an image over here and this is the image over here. Let's move aside. This is the image which is taken from an at atlas and here in this image what we are seeing is from the inner side of the skull and a lot of foramen over here. Few important foramen which I have already told you. Let me just underline them. Optic canal is this one. Superior orbital fissure is this one, which is between the anterior and middle cranial fossa. A fissure, that is optic canal. Rotundum, ovale and spinosum, they go in this manner. These are the rotundum, ovales and spinosum in the sphenoid bone. And this bigger one over here is the lacerum. Nothing actually passes through and through it, though something passes from posterior part of it. Then you have the carotid canal, canal over here. And then this bigger one is the jugular foramen, obviously the magnum and the internal acoustic matrix must be something like over here. So these are the few foramen. Now, let me give you a brief idea. This is, you are seeing the right half of the skull from the inner side. 
Now this whole area is the anterior cranial fossa, which is basically bounded by the bones like the frontal bone, the ethmoid bone, and the sphenoid bone. But that is the anterior cranial fossa. So the sphenoid, the lesser wing of the sphenoid, is the between the anterior and the middle cranial fossa. Now as you go from anterior to middle, you are going slightly inferior. So you are not seeing this 2D image, but if I make it from the side, and this is the anterior cranial fossa, then this would be the middle, and this would be the posterior cranial fossa. And then this would be the vault of the skull, and there would be a forearm magnum somewhat over here. So this is the anterior cranial fossa floor, that is the middle and the posterior cranial fossa. So you are going slightly inferior also. Now if you look at the structure of the brain also, then we make the brain roughly like this, if in something speed we have to make, and this is how we make the brain stem, and the cerebellum lies somewhat over here. So this is the portion of the anterior cranial fossa, if I just move aside over here. So anterior cranial fossa, this part of the brain lies over here. Then this is the middle cranial fossa, so temporal lobe would be lying over here, and that is the posterior, so the brain stem and the cerebellum would be lying and the medulla would be coming out from here. That is a brief idea of how to understand the foramens and how to you know, correlate the structure of the brain with the cranial cavity. So I repeat again, that is the cranial cavity over here, floor of anterior, middle, posterior, so you are going stepwise, step down. And then this is the structure of the brain, floor of anterior cranial fossa would be having the frontal lobe of the brain. So if there is somewhere a fracture over here, in the in the bony part, you know which part of the brain would can be injured. Middle cranial fossa, you know, temporal lobe is going over there, and the posterior cranial fossa, the brain stem, the cerebellum lying over here. That is one thing. So these are the basic idea of how to go through it, and these are the various foramina which we are seeing over here. So that was the anterior cranial fossa, and between the middle and the posterior, you have this petrous temporal bone that will be actually dividing it into or separating middle from the posterior. And then this hole is the posterior with the magnum foramen over here. Giving you a brief idea. Now, let us see in a skull also, where are these? So I told you two things which we need to know, which are where is that foramen and what are the contents. Remember these. If you remember this, all, obviously one or two questions of you will be solved out. In earlier sessions, we have already done the cranial nerve nuclei columns, so that will help you. Cranial nerve nuclei columns. I will try to bring the skull over here, close, slightly closer to you. I hope all of you can see it, right? So that is the cranial fossa and the cranial cavity over here. So you are seeing the side of it. That is the anterior side and that is the posterior side. The vault has been cut and removed. That is the norma basalis, the base of the skull what we see. And this is the cranial cavity. I repeat again, anterior over here. Can you see the frontal air sinuses? And the posterior is over here. Now have a quick look what we just saw in the in the slide over there or in the screen over there. This is this was our anterior cranial fossa. That was only only on the right side. If you completely this is the anterior cranial fossa with the lesser wing of a sphenoid over here. Now this over here slightly more deeper or slightly more inferior. This is the middle cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa. And this over here is the posterior cranial fossa. So I hope you have seen the fossas. Now let us quickly see what are the various foramens. In the anterior cranial fossa, I would like to show you first of all the crista geli over here. This is the crista geli over here. I hope you can see. If I bring it a little bit more closer, I hope the resolution is fine. And these are the cribriform plate of ethmoid, olfactory nerve, now number one. Then this is the optic canal over here. This is what that is the optic canal over here. Optic nerve is coming out. First nerve, second nerve. Along with it, you have the ophthalmic, ophthalmic artery also. And this between the lesser wing and this hole is the greater wing of sphenoid. We have this gap over here. I hope you can see behind it the screen. And if I wave my hand over here, can you see the hand also? That is a superior orbital fissure. So this over here is a superior orbital fissure. What passes? First, second, done. Third nerve, oculomotor. Fourth nerve, trochlear. Sixth nerve, abducens. And fifth nerve, first part. Because remember, fifth nerve is made of three, three parts. Fifth nerve, first part, that is the ophthalmic nerve, passes through the supraorbital fissure. So remember, third nerve, fourth nerve, first part of fifth and sixth nerve, and various other vessels that will passing through here. Clear? So that was supraorbital fissure. Now what we are left with, the two other nerves of fifth, second, and the third part, this is the rotundum over here. I hope you can see, this is the rotundum over here. That is the rotundum. Maxillary division. Second part of the trigeminal. And if you go slightly posterior lateral, that is the ovale. This foramen is the ovale. Now see, if, we, if I put my tip of the pencil to the ovale, we can see the screen, because it is opening to the base of the skull. But if, I, if you look at the rotor, now it is dark. 
Why it is opening anteriorly? That is the reason because it is opening anteriorly into the pterygopalatine fossa over here. So this is rotundum that is oval. What passes through oval? The third part of the trigeminal that was our mandibular nerve. So the mandibular nerve would be passing from here. Rotundum or foramen oval. What other structures passes? Remember the mnemonic male. That is a mandibular nerve, axillary meningeal artery, a branch of maxillary, lesser petrosal nerve and the emissary vein. Then posterior lateral toid you will have a very small foramen. Again with a background of white color of the screen that is the spinosum. I repeat over here this is the spinosum. Middle meningeal vessels and the meningeal branch of mandibular nerve. This is the foramen spinosum. So we have seen the nerves for 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th and 6th. Right. Now for the 7th and 8th nerve this is the internal acoustic meatus. I hope you can see it. That is our internal acoustic meatus which is a hole in the pitreous part of temporal bone 7th and 8th nerve. Facial and vestibular cochlear. For the 9th and 11th, remember that is the pitreous bone of the pitreous part of temporal bone, that is the occipital bone. You can see a suture over here and a gap over here, a irregular big gap, jugular foramen. So 9th, 10th, 11th nerve would be passing from here. Right? This is a jugular foramen. Then for last nerve, the 12th nerve, so this is the, in the because that is more inferior, so here you have the hypoglossal canal. From where the 12th nerve will go out from this part and can see the anterior condylar canal I will try to show you over here the tip of the pencil over here that is into the anterior condylar canal over here this is the anterior condylar canal the 12th nerve is coming out from here so these are the important foramens but also apart from the cranial nerves look at the foramen lacerum this is the foramen lacerum you can see the white background behind but actually in life it is filled up so if I put my fingers over here into the uh, lacerum and if I try to block these are the foramen lacerums because their base is filled by the cartilage and if I remove my fingers then you can see it. Right, so that is the lacerum for us. And what happens actually is if we look at the base of the skull, then this is the carotid canal. What is this? That is the carotid canal. How to re recognize it? You can see the oval and the spinosum. I hope you can see oval and spinosum. This bigger one is oval, and just posterior you have the spinosum. Just behind it in the petrous part, you have this as the carotid canal. Again, it is it is a darker, a darker background because it's not directly opening. The artery goes inside the petrous part, temporal bone, and then it will come out from here in the foramen lacerum through the cavernous sinus. So we have the different parts of the carotid artery. Internal is what we are talking of, internal carotid artery, right? So this is the carotid canal and the lacerum we already have seen, and in this also palate also they can ask you incisive and the palatine foramen, but they are not frequently asked in the neat PG, but still we should be knowing it. One more foramen that, or a couple of more foramen that we can be aware of is you can see the position of the styloid process over here. This projection over here, this projection over here is the styloid process. And that is the mastoid process. I hope you know what is the mastoid process and what muscles are attached to it, but that's not the point today. Today we are discussing the foramen. So between the styloid and the mastoid process, we have this foramen from which the seventh nerve comes out. So remember, the seventh nerve will enter from here, the internal acoustic meatus, right? Because it is it is brain stem. Seventh and eighth nerve will enter from here. Eighth nerve is dedicated to the ear, when, but the seventh nerve will come out from here, stylomastoid foramen. Now obviously, this is the magnum foramen, where the lower end of the medulla oblongata, where the lower end of the medulla oblongata actually passes from there and becomes a spine cord. It becomes a spine cord. So that is the magnum foramen. So this is just to give you an idea of. Uh, of all the foramens over here in the skull, the major foramens which we should be knowing because after this also we will be having a what we can say an open session in our app, an academy app in which we will be discussing all those uh, things, what are the various structures pass again and how to recognize it and few MCQs also. So let me show you a few MCQs. Uh, so this was I guess we already have seen in the skull also, this makes some sense. One more image over here which will uh, I would like to show to you is this one where again the same figure but with the cranial nerves, the 12 a pair of cranial nerves. So you can see the both sides are different, why? Because when I showed you the skull, all the meninges were removed. But imagine the dura mater which is covering the skull, so that is shown on the left side. Sorry, normally we don't see any foramens or nerve. But if you remove the, all the meningeal layer, then you will see the openings and the nerves. So here the dura mater is intact, here that is, you can show the, see the contents of the dura mater over here. Now let us quickly revise again, cribriform plate, now number one. Optic canal, nerve number 2 optic, 3, 4, V1 and 6, orbital fissure, 3, 4, V1, that is ophthalmic and 6, supraorbital fissure and you have this as the oval, mandibular and rotundum would be going anteriorly somewhat over here, that is the rotundum, V2, V3, right, 6 already done, 
7 and 8 are over here, acoustic meters, internal one. 9, 10, 11 are over, 9, 10, 11 are over here, jugular. 12th one is over here, that is a hypoglossal canal. So at least this we should be knowing. Then obviously in the open session we will be discussing each foramens in detail. Because already in this video I wanted to show you all the foramens. In the open session at around 9.25, in the app only we will be discussing what the structure passes through each foramen, how can we remember it. Now a couple of MCQs for you guys. After this, couple of MCQs for you to sort it out. This MCQ over here. Let us see what are they asking. A tumor growing at the base of the skull impinges upon the opening indicated by the arrow. You can see the tip of the right arrow, right uh, red arrow over there, severely compressing its contents. Which of the following conditions are most likely result? So if you can write in the comment box just what is this foramen, even that is 90% of the answer. Tip of the red arrow is pointing towards which foramen, even that is 90% of the answer. When that is sufficient, if uh, we are waiting over here, yes, uh, Ramya, what is this tip of the red arrow pointing towards which foramen? So if you know it, if you know the content, you know the answer. So if you are wondering which foramen, and if you, some of you have come out with the foramen spinosum, yes, it is right, this is the foramen spinosum. And in front of it, you will have the oval. oval. What passes through the spinosum, let me just elaborate over here. A couple of foramens, foramen spinosum. Why do we call it foramen spinosum? Because it is adjacent to the spine of sphenoid. And what passes through it is the middle meningeal vessels. It is the middle meningeal vessels. Now some of you are wondering what are these vessels? These are the branches of maxillary artery. First part maxillary artery. And then you have a recurrent branch of the, or recurrent meningeal branch would be a better, better way to say, recurrent meningeal branch of the mandibular nerve, of the mandibular nerve. So these two structures pass through this opening of foramen spinosum. And if there is a tumor which is compressing its contents, then these two contents are being compressed. And if you compress the artery to the dura mater, there will be arterial supply to the dura mater will be reduced and option number D becomes the answer. Option number D becomes the answer. Yes, uh, Shetayan Mati, that was indeed a spinosum. So these are the questions, sort of questions that can come. Again, remember just two things in foramen, where and what are the contents. Where, what are the contents? These are two essential things to know in, a, in any exam, need VG or INI, ZD for that matter if you are giving. Let's see uh, one more question over here. Let's see this question. Again, an image based question, but I will show you the image later on. Let's see the question. A provided X and opening in the skull is identified at the tip of the air head arrow. Last question. If the nerve that traverses the cranial opening were damaged, what sign symptoms would most likely be in the patient? Again, identify the foramen by the tip of the arrow. I will be the same image. Arrow we have shifted anteriorly, we already have seen that that was oval. But thing is what passes through the oval, 99% of you must be knowing, if not then you must be knowing. We already read the, read the mnemonics over here in from first year days male. There are two nerves in it, mandibular and the lesser petrosal. There are two nerves. Okay. So, if, that is, if the nerve is compressed, what will happen? They are saying no, that uh, if the nerve that traverses this opening were damaged, what will happen? So unilateral muscles of facial expression paralysis, no, that is seventh. Unilateral muscles of mastication, that is your V3, mandibular, yes, that would be the answer. Right? Paracesis of upper lip and cheek and lower right, that is V2, rotundum. And decreased salivation, that is called a tympani nerve over here. So not for that. So answer for this question would be, first of all, where is the foramen? So identify the foramen. And what are the contents? So for the content, for the content thing, as we have seen over here in this particular image, for understanding content, uh, content we will be having an open session. Right? So, uh, would like to see you in the open session at around 9.25 in 2-3 uh, minutes from now. So that's all from my side in this small session. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, thank you for your time. Hope to see you in the open session. Thank you.